Hey guys, this is Locke. In this video, I'm gonna go through the Nation of Monsters Diabolic Secretary. I'm actually going to be doing the second last battle dedicated Aedis because I find it is a lot easier than the Faithful Fighters because you only have to fight one enemy as opposed to three enemies in the Faithful Fighters stage. So there are a couple of things that you need to know about the stage, uh, dedicated Aedis. The first thing is that you want to bring a unit that has stun resistance. So the unit that I'm bringing is this fire unit uh, who has a skill to increase all allies stun evasion rate by 90%. Um, the unit that the game gives you for free, this one, the Dark Benemaru, also has the same skill. So if you don't have this unit leveled up like I do not, it's only at level 60, you can actually put him in the rear guard and then on your fourth turn you can switch him and use the allies stun evasion skill. If he dies at that point, it's fine because the boss only tends to use it once and um, after he dies, he will be switched out with one with your, one of your other units anyway. So it's fine. As long as he gets off that skill in the fourth turn, that's the most important thing, then you should be fine for the stage. The other thing is you definitely want to bring some healers as well. So I'm bringing two healers myself. I am bringing uh, this one, which most people re-rolled for. And I also have another healer that I pulled as well, which is this one, so I brought this one. It's still possible to do with one healer, but it's significantly easier to do it with two. So I'm gonna give you the rest of the tips as I'm playing through the stage. This is the team that I'm using. You definitely want to at least spend a Maru either in the rear guard or in the supporting slot because he does give you at least a 20% boost to your overall reward. Um, you can use him in the rear guard if you don't have another unit with stun resist, but you definitely want to bring him. Um, there's quite a few other technical things in the stage that I want to talk about, but I will mention them as um, you know, as I'm fighting. So first of all, I definitely want to increase my soul, uh, you know, this the skill soul because I have quite a few skills that I want to use, the stun resist and the heals. So if you take a look at the amount of souls that I'm going to get, if we use these two skills, I'm going to get plus 13. But if I use these three, I'm actually going to get higher. I'm going to get 14. So even if I want to increase my soul as soon as possible, it might make sense to use um, something else if you can combo it higher. Obviously, the best thing to do here is this one because that's going to increase it by 16. But if you have a choice where you can do you know, something like this, where you can use two greens or a three of a different color, I would go with the three of a different color because that, inc that actually increases your soul count more than using two greens. So as I mentioned before, the best thing right now is actually to do this because that is the highest soul increase of plus 16. So um, on the top left there, he actually the boss actually tells you when he's going to use the stun skill. But if you don't pay attention, just make sure you keep pay attention to your uh, turn count. When the turn count hits four, is when you want to use your stun resist skill. So here I'm going to do this. By the way, if um, if uh, this was some other unit, like obviously uh, this pink haired unit. Shuna is my strongest unit. It's level 92. Everyone else is much lower than that. Um, so she's my strongest unit. If I was able to make a chain of four or five, I want to have the strongest unit in the chain because that unit is going to get the boost. Like for example, at the at the right here, you see it's a bonus of 120%. So I want to make sure that Shuna is the one that ends up attacking last because she'll get that 120% attack bonus boost. Um, in this case, it doesn't matter because all four attacks are from her. But um, yeah, in other cases, uh, you want to make sure that your strongest unit is the one that attacks last. By the way, the boss, whenever he does a counter attack, it does a ton of damage. So uh, right now, my trainer, this unit is, you know, she has a defense decrease uh, debuff. So if I had her um, at the bottom here, I would not use her skills. The reason I wouldn't use her skill right now, if I can help it, is because if the boss happens to counter as I'm using it, it'll probably hit me for a ton of damage, maybe even one shot her because she has a defense decrease buff, sorry, defense decrease debuff. So if I can help it, I would avoid it. So, uh, well, first of all, I don't have her, uh, her souls at the bottom, so I don't have to think about it. But the other thing that I mentioned before is to make sure that I end up with Shuna as the last unit that attacks because she gets a boost to her, um, yikes. She gets a boost 
to her damage when she attacks last. That looks that was close. So now I will use my heal. And you can see over there it said that incoming stun attack anticipated. And secondly, I will use my stun resist. Alright. Um yeah, so now I will build a chain and again I will make sure that Shuna attacks last because I want her to be doing the most amount of damage. Sometimes these counterattacks are deadly, like you might counter two attacks in a row and your unit is dead, even if you follow all the tips and everything, and you can't really do anything about that. Alright, so... Um, I can't heal here because I don't have enough soul, but my units are, you know, down in their HP. So I would like to bring in my other healer, this one, and I will switch with, uh, I will switch with her because she has the least amount of the bar filled up and I don't want to lose that. So I will use his healing. Perfect. And then I will use this. Yeah, I will use this one to fill up her bar. And hopefully he doesn't counterattack. Perfect, he didn't counterattack. Okay. So now I have a special skill here, um, my protection skill that changes green orbs into blue, and I'm going to do that to make my uh, units have a six chain, basically. Perfect. And then now my second strongest unit is the fire unit. So I'm going to make sure I end my chain with her. And there we go. These guards kind of suck because I think it reduces your damage by half whenever he guards. Okay, and the boss is almost dead. So in the next turn, I'll definitely be able to defeat him. All right, there we go. So I will just use this and that should be game. So there you go. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you guys some tips on how to beat the stage and some of the uh, mechanics behind it. Um, I definitely recommend doing this event because it does give you quite a few things that I personally find to be quite useful. Uh, one of the things that you can get from the shop, um, this one, is this item, the blueprint. I already bought three of them, but the blueprint basically allows you to make a house and you can make three of these houses, which increases your population. And as I mentioned before, the population is kind of how you kind of go up in this game. Um, a lot of things are d based on your population. So I highly recommend that you get that. Um, and then there are also quite a few other neat things as well. And this is also pretty nice as well. Uh, you know, you definitely want to get this as soon as you can to awaken him because the higher awakened he is the more um, points that you get as a reward uh, on top of that those are not the only rewards that you get from this but as you complete these stages you actually build up um, you know these this total milestone reward and you get these items as well so overall you get quite a f you know quite a few things including some of these tickets by the way the uh, protection character that I have the one that I just showed you this one, I actually got it very luckily from the uh, fr from the free ticket. So, I mean, you might get lucky as well. So I definitely recommend that you do the event and, uh, you know, best of luck. If you guys need more tips or don't know how to do something, let me know and I'll do my best to help you. Um, at some point, I'll probably make a guide, hopefully it's, you know, hopefully soon on how to do the faithful fighters. But right now I feel like my team isn't strong enough to do it yet. Uh, and I also feel like my team is, um, like, it, I, I might need to actually pay attention a lot more than this one to do it. Uh, and it's a lot more luck based as well, depending on how many green souls I have in my hand whenever the uh, one of the bosses cast that green debuff. So it's a lot more luck dependent and you can't really auto it. So I feel like the dedicated Aedas is the one to do more easily. That's why I'm, that's why I'm showing you this guide. But um, yeah, at some point, hopefully I'll be able to do a guide on the other one as well. But anyway, that's it from now. That's it. That's it for me for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care now.